Uh, welcome. We're Thank glad you. to be interviewing you for Hispanic Pro. Thank you. And uh, you know we have a lot of uh, members that are culture goers. So they like uh -huh. uh, they like performance art, they like culture, they like music. I love it. Uh, you know the things that you're involved with. So that's yeah. why uh, <laughs> you know, we, we're happy that we got the opportunity to to interview you. I'm very so, happy. Um, so yeah. So welcome to Chicago. Thank you. And, the uh, Windy are, City. The Windy City. It how is are you windy. enjoying it? <laughs> Are you enjoying it? I'm loving it. I, I was here as a tourist five years ago. Okay. Because uh, I was there's actually um, an, I, I was gonna live here, mm -hmm. but that uh, the plan fell through. But um, it's wonderful to be back five years later, and what a way to be back! You know, I am uh, starring in this beautiful musical about two people that I love and that uh, a story that is so um, special and so important to me during times that are uh, very important. Uh, to be telling this particular story and living my dream, literally. It's like um, full circle in a beautiful way. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so then let me, let me ask you, uh, TV or musical theater, which, uh, which one is, uh, is more challenging or, uh, and, and why? Well, they both have their challenges. Um, TV, uh, you have an early schedule and you have to wake up early and you're waiting most of the time, you know, we say in Mexico, te pagan por esperar, eh, actuar es puro placer. No, they pay you for waiting. Acting is mere pleasure, and they're right when it comes to TV and film. You know, that's that's the nature of the beast. But the process is beautiful, and I love it, and it, 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 they both have their challenges. Of course, theater is live, and it's eight shows a week, and spe wow. specifically, when I'm doing musical theater, it's even more challenging, because you have to take care of your voice because you, you're singing eight shows a week. Sometimes the scores are some some are harder than not others. You know, some roles are more demanding than others. So it's it's like being a, a an athlete. You know, you got to take care of your body. You got to uh, sleep. You got to you can't party at night. You, right. you, you got to sleep in and kind of be a hermit. But you got to love it, and I love it. You know, I love the stage so much. I love the theater. It's one of my biggest passions uh, because, specifically musical theater, because my three passions are there, joined together. Acting, singing, and dancing. That's awesome. And it's live. And it's live. And Absolutely. so you get the, that feedback from the audience and it's, it's just beautiful. It's, it's not the same as being in a studio or in a recording studio. That's beautiful and I love to do it and I will continue to do so the rest of my life. Uh, God willing, but uh, there's something about live when I do concerts as a singer or when I do musicals or when I do plays as an actor There's nothing like live sure like it's just it's electrifying so know? so talking about electrifying and, yeah. and feeding off the audience uh, What happens when when the audience hears a song that they love from Miami Sound Machine um, do, and they jump up and do they start dancing? Do you allow it? Do you encourage yeah, it? Yeah, of course. I mean, the, the beauty about this show is, is that it's not a, um, it's a musical about a superstar and his uh, husband, who is the manager of Y Play, and it takes you inside their lives. Mm -hmm. And most of their life were spent on tour, on stage, doing concerts. So. A lot of the scenes are a concert. You see literally Gloria, the girl that's playing Gloria, on stage as Gloria, and we have the Miami Sound Machine, five members of the original Miami Sound Machine oh, behind wow. us, that's playing awesome. with us. So that's beautiful to do, so to sound have. Almost exactly the it way sounds it exactly, like it sounds exactly like that. These guys have been playing these songs for over 30 years. Right. We have Clay Oswald, who's our musical director, who also co-wrote the music, uh, the, the title song, On Your Feet. And he's an amazing human being, a beautiful pianist. We have Jorge Casas, who's the bass player, who was an original Miami Sound Machine member. He's from Puerto Rico, he's amazing. We have uh, Teddy Mulet, who's also Puerto Rican, and he's a trumpet player. And we have Skaggs, Mike Skaggs, who plays also one of the medals, one of the uh, trumpets, and he's the sax, and he's amazing. And we have Edwin, who is amazing. He's Cuban and he's a percussionist and he plays a conga and a timbales. And it's beautiful to have them there because they inject us, the new ones, right. the ones that were, we're not a part of that era. We're not part of the touring company of Gloria and Emilio. 
but we're playing them. So to have the real deal with us, that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. And it must be also reassuring that you have, uh, you, you have performers who know how to give 110%. Yes. That no matter how they're feeling, they're bringing their game on every performance. And that's, that's part of the gig, too, about live theater and live music and, and being a live performer, as sure. opposed to, I also do it and I love it. But when you're doing something live, it doesn't matter if you're tired. It doesn't matter if you uh, didn't sleep well. Like, if you're if you're exhausted, you have to show up, right. and you have to work on top of that. Yeah. And you you become a you become a, a fighter, a survivor, a warrior. And people paid a lot of money to come see you. So you better deliver. You better have something to give, and you open your heart, and you get share a little bit of that Absolutely. through your voice, through your acting, through your body. And these guys just set the example. I mean, they're they're older than us because they've been in the business and they were born before us, you know. Uh, and they're still doing it, and they do it smiling. And they've been playing these songs forever, and they still play it. You see the bass player Jorge playing the song as if it was the first time he's playing it. And you see Skaggs like just blowing away that trumpet, and you it's like almost as if it was the first time he's playing it. And that's beautiful. It's inspiring to see. Absolutely. You know. Uh, I want to go back. You mentioned about uh, uh, Emilio and yeah. Gloria, and um, and the musical is about their relationship. Yeah. So they had a very special. They have a very special relationship. Yeah. One of which is love, and the other one is business. Right. So in the play, does it touch upon that? Like the 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 you know maybe there was challenges that they had in in in. Uh, and just being, uh, having this dichotomy of yeah. we're in love, but we're also business partners. Well, yeah, in the beginning, uh, it, and the story with the, is beautifully written by Alex Dinellaris, who won the Oscar for Birdman. Um, oh, wow. He wrote the, the story uh, based on what Emilio and Gloria shared, you know, and uh, he, there's a beautiful script. And the conflict in Act One is basically that Gloria is a shy girl, but with a lot of talent, with a natural ability to create music and lyrics to beautiful songs. And when Emilio meets her for the first time, he is captivated by this talent, and he finds what he was looking for. He had a, a band called Miami Latin Voice, and he finds Gloria, so now he has to change the name because she's not a boy, so it's, now it's called the Miami Sound Machine. And it, the show takes you on a journey of how they met, how they struggled, how they survived, how they fell in love. The mother was opposed to the relationship, and the mother, Gloria's mother, was opposed. She didn't want her uh, daughter to be an artist, and she didn't want her, uh, she thought, uh, uh, you're studying to be a psychologist, like, major in that, you know? Um, and she didn't, like, like Emilio, and that's a known fact, you know? Um, uh, so, and there's a scene where Gloria tells her dad, um, who was uh, a soldier in, in Vietnam, and he um, had multiple sclero sclerosis, and he was in bed. He couldn't speak at the time anymore, but Gloria is there, and he's saying that she loves Emilio, that she's, she's falling in love with him, but she's afraid because of the band, too. Sure. So that, there's that fine line between, yeah, he's the leader of the band, and I'm the singer, and He's the manager, so but they found a way, and they found a beautiful way, and they still do it to this day. They're very inspiring. If I have a relationship goal, is to have exactly my Gloria to my Emilio and my Emilio to the Gloria, because it's just beautiful to see how they've managed to to do what they've done and still be in love and still be humble and still help so many people and so be so loving and so caring. Sure. And the, so the story basically shares a lot about that sure you know um so then let me ask you because we um you know our network is of latino professional yeah um in all kinds of aspects but what advice would you have uh in closing uh, what kind of advice would you have for latino professionals or yeah. latino students college students that want to go into performance arts that want to go into Theater. To do uh, it, to do it, to follow your heart. We need more artists. We need more Latinos. Representation matters, and it's the time. Right now is our time. Uh, I remember back when I moved to New York 20 years ago as a student to to uh, pursue a career in acting. 
I was the only Mexican at that school, and I was uh, the only Latino there. And you would open playbills on Broadway, and there was like one Latino in like a show or so. Now there's shows based on us. Now right. we have like 95% of Latinos in the cast of On Your Feet, in the Heights. Like the Oscars were just beautiful and inspiring because they were the most Mexican Oscars in history. And I love that, you know, there was actually a mariachi band on stage. So it's, it's our time. And um, if you're a Latino and you want to perform, you gotta be prepared, you gotta show up, you gotta fight for your dreams and you gotta, it's not only, only about the talent, it's about right. the work you put. Absolutely. Yeah, you have the talent, but you have to work Absolutely. and match that and be like, insist and insist and don't give up and don't give up because it's, it's a way of life. It's a career of resistance, sure. not of velocity. And persistence. Yes, a lot of persistence, well. but don't give up. We need more Latinos. Yeah. We need more Latinos in the entertainment industry. We need more Latino writers, Latino directors, Latino producers, Latino singers, Latino models, Latino... We need more Latinos, period. So many professions. More now than ever, yeah, you know, to, to prove to the world that uh, if you're in this country, Latinos are so important in America. We're the, largest, yeah, we're the largest minority. Yeah, we are. And yeah. Spanish is, is spoken all over this yeah. country. So we got to embrace that Absolutely. and f feel proud and not be scared. Be proud. And, well, and, and we're proud to have you thank as you. an example for, for, thank you. For, our, for, our, you know, for our members, but also <laughs> for you know, anyone, you know, a college student or someone that yeah. wants to go into performance art. And, it really is about following your heart and following yeah. what you want to do. And so. always remember where you come from. And always, always, always be proud of your roots. That's something that I, I've always had, but now that I've had the, the blessing of being close to icons such as Gloria and Emilio and other people that I met along the way, the beauty of them is that they don't forget where they come from. Right. So you can be successful less without forgetting where you came from. You should never forget it. Absolutely. You know, I have my Mexican flag right here and my Lady of Guadalupe right here. Like, okay. it's right here. I am Mexican and I will Absolutely. always say it with a big smile and with a thick accent, even though my English it might not sound uh, with a thick accent, but but it's there. Absolutely. You know, and we have to be so authentic. Mexicano. We have to be authentic. Yeah, you have to be yourself. Mexicanos. Yeah, of course. Claro. Well, muchas gracias por, por la entrevista. Gracias y, a ti. Y que disfrutes Chicago. Gracias. Uh, y, y, es, y esperamos que tengas tiempo para explorar. Sí. Que tenemos mucho, mucho que ofrecer aquí en Chicago. Sí, es esta hermosa ciudad. esta ciudad. Me encanta. Y, y, que, y que, la, que la ames como nosotros amamos a Chicago. Muchas gracias por recibirme con tanto cariño y los quiero muchísimo. Mauricio. Que los bendiga. Muchas gracias. Uh, gracias a ti. Gracias.